Well, it's been a long time holding on to home With many a turn down a winding road Through the wind and the rain Through the ice and snow Yeah, it's been a long time holding on I have a very vivid memory of, I think it was my 10th birthday when I, uh, when my parents surprised me with my first real steel string acoustic guitar. It was a harmony. I saw it and I was just like, wow, you know, I mean, I, I think that I had shown a, an interest in music from a young age from the very first time I started playing the guitar. I just went straight forward with it and never looked back. Hold on, hold on, hold on to hope. Hold on, hold on, hold on to hope. Always felt natural to me to play music, play the guitar, and to write songs. Even I remember writing songs with that with that guitar and I'd get it down to like keep breaking strings and I'd have like two strings left on it. But I'd still write songs on the guitar with two strings. And so I think I was turning thirteen and my, my mom got me my parents got me into guitar lessons so then I had to put all six strings on the guitar and I had to learn how to make the chords and and, and so I was a little upset about that because I had my own little way figured out. Cheer up little baby girl It's gonna be alright It takes a long time for for music to sort of take root inside of you and uh, and, and you know I've certainly it's certainly enhanced my life on every level, just going through the stages of sort of becoming a musician and um, realizing what that means for me and, you know, in a larger sense what that means, uh, you know, to give back. I'm feeling really good about where I'm at musically and in, a, in the sense that it's not forced. What is the most honest way I can approach being a musician? And, and that has been, I've found that in uh, folk music and uh, bluegrass and roots music and country. All this stuff was in me all along, it's just that I, I kind of had, uh, I was covering it up. And it feels really good to be in a place now where I'm just complete, completely open to the muse uh, of what comes out of me naturally. And I think that that's, that's been uh, a revelation for me in the last few years. My parents also had an influence. Their musical tastes had an influence on me. So alongside with all of the stuff from the 90s and you know, the immediate stuff that was popular in the time. You know, I was listening to the Beatles and Pink Floyd and Bob Dylan and Neil Young and uh, John Denver and Cat Stevens and just, you know, music that they loved. And, and I loved that music. And that always seemed to me like, you know, just the best music there ever was. And it, it still seems like that. To me. From Norman Blake to John Prine to Bluegrass, Bill Monroe, and Tony Rice, and just all of this stuff that's really at the heart of American roots music.
live shows uh, for me lately have been vastly different in uh, you know context and how many different you know cause sometimes I'm just playing solo shows sometimes it's me and Brian Wilkie I mean if you think about it music it's just kind of a special situation where you have groups of people creating something collectively like that, right? That doesn't really happen in life very much. It doesn't really happen in the arts that much, does it? Collective creation, and then when you add collective improvisation where you're spontaneously, collectively creating something at the same time, that's a pretty remarkable human, you know, pretty human achievement. And when it happens, man, it is exciting. You know, for me, it all comes down to playing live music and, and playing in front of an audience. Wake up, heavy sleepers. Sun is getting high. All these forty meters gonna leave us high and dry. Definitely one of the main payoffs for for going down this road because it's one of the the few times where you you actually feel a sense of this is. This is why I do what I do, you know. This kind of interaction with, with an audience, with people, that connection, you know, at, at the heart level is, uh, is why I do what I do. All the way to Maine, everywhere there's suffering. Songs, I don't know, songs, there are some songs that I just, when you listen to it, it just, I don't know. That's the most exciting thing. I mean, I'll wake up in the middle of the night and think about a song and I'll, man, I'm gonna go hear that song and I'll sit there and listen to it. And it's, or I'll hear a certain song on the radio in the car and I'll just start screaming because it's just exciting. I just, there's something about it, a song that, that, I don't know. It, you can't really, I like those songs where it just really, has a big effect on you and you don't really even know why. You can't really even explain why. You don't know what's going to inspire a song. Uh, obvious things like like love and and relationships. I, I'm not I'm not one of these people that that's afraid to write a love song. I think some of the most beautiful songs are love songs. Sometimes sadly it comes from it comes from situations that are painful. And I think that that's how we heal sometimes. We sing about things that are painful to us in an effort to kind of bring ourselves to some place of reckoning with that situation. Some place of knowing that, that through it all, things are gonna work themselves out or that there's some greater purpose to what happens to us as we go through our lives. And it's, uh, it's a good feeling when you write a song that you that you know has had some kind of healing effect on you. That's what I'm sort of most inspired by, I guess, through the songwriting process, is writing a song where I feel like it's done good things for me, and so therefore I hope that it can do something good for someone else. I was looking to do another record and I I had the idea to work with the producer for this one and I, I somehow stumbled upon Bo Ramsey. I, I was playing a gig in Iowa City and he lives there. I was opening for an old friend of his, Kevin Gordon, and so we met that night and I had certainly heard of Bo uh, from a number of different 
Angles. Uh, I knew that he worked with Greg Brown a lot um, and that he had done a record and played with Lucinda Williams. And, uh, you know, I was, I was really kind of jumped at the chance to get the guy in my corner, and I'm really glad that I did. And I heard his first record, and, and which I was pretty impressed with. Is I thought Ernie had a lot of music in him. And then it just sort of dawned on me that this was the perfect guy. And it really ended up being that way. Um, I just really hit it off with him musically and personally. And I'm just very thankful that that whole situation developed the way that it did. I think we got a great result. I, I listened a lot to the demos and I, I could hear myself inside, kind of taking the inside track. And uh, that's kind of was my approach, was to go inside, kind of work with the rhythm section and play with the rhythm section and uh, just try and serve the song. So yeah, I ended up playing a fair amount on the record. I didn't know how I was gonna react to working with the producer. <laughs> because I can tend to be, I can tend to be a, a little obsessive in how I want things to sound. So that was not really a concern because I had heard a lot of records that Boa has worked on and I love the sound of them. I mean, outside of having Bo as the producer, having Bo as the guitar player on a lot of those songs is, uh, was just incredible for me. Well, it was one of the, it was one of the coolest things about working with him is just what, a, what an amazing guitar player he is and, and how he can find a guitar part that's just feels so natural and feels like it belongs in the song. My main job as a producer is to serve the song, to do whatever I can do to get the artist's vision on tape. And that means playing or not playing, being in the room or in the booth, playing tambourine or guitar, you know, whatever I can bring to the table. So this is the Minstrel Studios, run by John Speck. This is where we recorded the, the album. So we were out here for five days. We did Monday, Monday through Friday in early January this year and, you know, spent long days and by, by, the, by Wednesday we had basic tracks for 13 songs. Bo wanted to record all the songs with the band live in the studio. And I thought, wow, that's, that's a tall order for me. Because in a studio, I'm just, I'll sing it a hundred times if I think I can keep doing better. But I, I didn't have that luxury this time, and I really trusted his instinct on that. And I think to great effect, I think that I think the songs came out sounding really good. That was totally different for me to to think about uh, playing and singing while you know at the same time in a recording setting. So I it, I just had to come into it. You know I knew that's how it was going to happen, and so I prepared for it. You know it's if you have that mentality of this is it, we're going to cut this song, and it's going to be what we use on the record, uh, good things can happen, amazing things can happen. I, I, I love playing live music, you know, that's, that's like one of the, the main things that keeps me in music is, is live, live shows and the energy involved with that. So that was kind of how I came into this project, just thinking about going out there and playing the songs. And, 
getting the, getting the feel. This has been one of those situations where you look back and, and you, you just have to kind of scratch your head and say, wow, you know, that all came together in such a great way. And that's, that's definitely how I feel about this record and working with Bo and the whole experience of making music with him and with, with his friends in Iowa. And Iowa is a special place. And it was really evident to me after spending a few days there that that was the right place to be making this music in the middle of January when everything is just quiet. And it was, it was a really kind of out of the way place and definitely lent itself to the creative process. So working with Bo and working in Iowa are two of the main reasons why the music on Walking with Angels sounds the way it does.